match here, of course, what is the loser's bracket finals of Dingle, Blue Dingo Balls versus Rexars here. And thus, uh, of course, the series at one game apiece leading into this game right here. So here we are, the third and final game. Again, the winner goes to Diamond, the loser goes to Gold. And look at the way things are starting here. A little bit of a uh, little bit of history. If you are just tuning in, well, game one, Swift Blade had over 700 gold per minute to finish things off in favor of the Legion team. In this case, Blue Dingo Balls, and uh, they get it again here after being banned last game. So already an interesting start coming out here in game uh, game three here. Yeah, and I mean, no surprise we see the instant snap pick out from Empath. I mean, you can't really give Swiftblade and Empath this sort of combo. I mean, if Quincy was here, he probably would give us some crazy stat on how well Swiftblade does with Empath or something like that. But um, in the end, we see the Empath Drunken Master. Another good combo, actually, that sort of Stay Green was sort of famous for sort of picking up together and working very well. But the Return Kraken pick, actually, I mean, in this just one series, we've seen a lot of different picks, I have to admit. Um, and just in general, I mean, and that's what I, just, I guess what happens when um, you know, there's a sort of change in the meta game and, and you know, sort of different uh, balance sort of patches, etc. And as a result, we see a lot of different heroes, which is obviously good to see yeah. uh, on the past. Oh, yeah. I uh, always go back to that. Definitely fun to see it again. Uh, really, uh, next week when Cycle 1 be getting a diamond, uh, we're going to really start to get an idea of how things are shaping up going into a brand new season officially. But uh, finishing up the qualifiers here. Again, there will be another series here after this one. At least that's the plan. Uh, of course, Blue Dingo Balls, or excuse me, <laughs> Dawn is actually waiting in the Grand Finals. They play the winner of this, which could be either Blue Dingo Balls or Rexars. And again, both those teams will already have made Diamond at that point, but just simply uh, playing for a little bit higher of a C, a little bit more points. Uh, and, of course, there's always the pride factor in the end. So definitely looking forward to another uh, another series after this one as well. But obviously you got to get through this very important one here uh, in the end. So, by the way, so something to note, actually, for our Legion team, uh, Blue Dingo Balls over here. They actually did replace one of their players, a Swift Flame not here. Art of Fuh is instead in place. Um, now, they, they, they've kind of been going back and forth. I don't know if it's just a decision maybe he had to go or whatever. But um, worth noting that they have a new fifth in here. But Wretched Hag is going to be finishing off here for the Hellborn side on top of the Empath and Drunken Master. So, yeah, where will uh, where will Blue Dingo Balls go with the Swift Blade pick up? Will they try for that tri-lane or something different? Right click and a Martyr, I mean. That would be sick to <laughs> see. I mean, I love that hero. The hero is so, so strong, particularly the Guardian Angel. I think Zinc have been sort of the, the, the most uh, prominent team that sort of picked up Martin had quite quite a bit of success with it and it does so so well the only issue again is with a lot of these sort of secondary supports is is the laning phase if you can get out of that the hero is very very strong um, but in the tri lane I think it might be punished uh, more so than, than not um, but I would like to see it I mean I don't think we've actually seen it um, that much from Homecast have we break here I don't know if you know Martyr? Oh no Yeah. Martyr is definitely another one of these heroes that I, I personally like to play every now and then you know being the more support role and stuff and uh, very aggressive support in the laning phase with that Immolate, or I, is it called Immolate? Uh, Retribution. <laughs> I see the icon, and I'm not going to lie. It looks like <laughs> yeah. Immolate from World of Warcraft. So, anyways, <laughs> Retribution, as it's preferably called. Um, but then also has the great assistance tools, obviously, with the Guardian Angel, the Wings, and then the Ultimate. And they made some changes to a Soul's Conviction a while back. It, that, that, that's kind of been through some reworks, I believe, as far as what it ultimately does. But um, it's at a pretty solid state right now, uh, you know, with the, the heal and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean... The likelihood of seeing him, probably pretty low, but you never know. We have been seeing some fun picks here. so um, I mean, when it comes to trial and setup, yeah, he doesn't provide a stun, but he provides a decent slow and could possibly be some good damage. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think, again, with a lot of these sort of secondary supports that are a little bit wacky in terms of, you know, outside of the learning phase, I think uh, Mart would be perfect and played as a sort of secondary sport against like a suicide, like say if it's like a, a two versus a one sort of situation. He's sort of babysitting, like say the Swift Blade going against say perhaps like a, a wretched hag in the suicide lane can fit perfectly in that sort of laning space. But hmm. uh, when it, against a tri lane, he, he can get kind of a little bit uh, wrecked because obviously he doesn't have that stun. Yeah. I mean, and the wretched future is sort of it, it focuses or relies on you to have a lot less HP yeah. uh, for your damage to happen out. And if you're low HP in the tri lane, obviously you're going to get. Um, gone on and as a result die and so uh, we probably won't see him and we won't in the end picked up uh, a torture instead. They go the safer option and well an option that boring. just makes more sense. Yeah, no, the boring option here. Yeah, it's almost as if they're just trying to play to win. I mean, 
Screw that. Torture is the fourth pick. Sure enough, coming out here. But yeah, obviously coming together very nicely. And speaking of that, there are quick of the bands overall. It was Feral Rhapsody, Madman, Parasite, Bubbles, and Flux. Rhapsody even making it that far. Uh, also very worth noting. I mean, she was even, I believe, first pick last game. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, or one of the first picks. So, Pestilence. into the banning stage this time around. Pestilence coming out. All right. Pestilence, you know, decent synergy with the Drunken Master, of course, as far as damage output goes. Uh, with uh, physical damage, but they got three heals right there that, you know, usually would like a good amount of farm. Yeah, uh, it's got to be another secondary support, because I think even a jungle would, would take out too much farm here on the Hellborn side, but... Dr. Repulsa here on the Legion. A hero that's been sort of gaining quite a lot of speed recently, hasn't it? I mean, it's been absolutely dominated. Uh, I think it was one of the highest win percentage in terms of uh, Quincy's stats. And, and, and no surprise there, if you can get that farm, he can still do so much work, uh, pretty much. I mean, uh, one of the typical heroes uh, that works so, so well as a snowball farmer. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends if you can get that farm. I mean, again, on Legion, sort of similar with Hellborn, though. They, they has, there's a lot of farm to be sort of given around to Swift, but to the Kraken as well as the Doctor Repulsor, but <laughs> if obviously they can get that farm, they can definitely do a lot of work with it. Yeah. So the Doctor Repulsor, uh, yeah, the final pick indeed for our Legion side. Now, where are they going to go on the Hellborn team? You talk about the secondary support probably makes the most sense here uh, in the end, and it is going to be that. They go Nymphora. I love things Nymphora. Off. Yeah, you like to pick up here. Yeah, because, I mean, there is definitely a potential coming out from Swiftblade to trial him with the Engineer and Torture, but there's not like a set stun. Obviously, they have the Torture, but even that is kind of hard to hit level one because, I mean, the, the enemy team can easily just back off. So if they do just sort of tend to try and lane, I mean, you could easily get the Empath and Nymphora levels due to... Um, just sort of pulling uh, with like the pool camp or even you know, onto the hard camp as well and there's not much really like Legion can really do about it because they don't have like an empath that can really sort of take initiative out of the the misposition and come out from Hellborn because they need to mostly uh, mainly sort of stun out with the torturers and, uh, and as I mentioned before kind of hard to hit uh, as the sort of first stun yeah all right so here we go game number three coming at us again very important game right here the winner not only moves on, but again, qualifies for Diamond. The loser is going to Gold Division. No, I've said that a lot, but really just a stress. What ultimately is on the line here, and definitely quite a big deal. So into the laning phase, Pestilence is lining up in that middle lane right now. Looks like Empath uh, possibly could be heading there with him, but I think a lot of that's also going to have to do, obviously, where the where the Legion team goes right here. So, I mean, do you see anything different in the Legion team just going in the aggressive trial lane, or could they possibly mm, I mean, do more like, 2-2-1? They could easily do a 2 2 1 and just sort of send the Suicide Swiftler, which actually I think that might be the case because actually Beaver is playing the Doctor Repulsor. Um, and if I've sort of cottoned on to that fact, I think so should the, the Hell One as well, actually. And they could easily just run the, the, the Drunken Master as a, if, uh, the sort of hard carry in the short lane or, and just send Wretched Hag Suicide or just sort of dual lane the Wretched Hag with the Nymphora, which isn't too bad because Nymphora can get out of levels. And, and although you don't really want to dual lane a Hag, it can still work in the end, and I think that's what they're going to do, actually, because Rich Hag already making their way top. Yep. Uh, head to the top lane. So, yeah, we'll see how, obviously, it all uh, comes together here for this uh, for this lineup. You know, we were talking last game about uh, items, you know, and just, uh, like, the Ion Stone kind of, you know, solid item. And an item that just got introduced, though, with the uh, with the recent patch is that uh, Vile's Rot. Now, is it not eligible yet? Okay, maybe, maybe that even makes more sense, because... It does say new on it, and I believe yeah, you that. Can't. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I thought that well, was kind then. of yeah. yeah. Whenever you get like a new item or a new general, or new hero, it's not going to be allowed in competitive. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure if it's going to be allowed in competitive in Hunter Season Three. I'd assume so. But, I would assume so. Um, well, I mean, the thing that, like yeah. Lex Talionis actually, when it first came out, it would just right away put into tournament mode. Yeah. So. Sure. Uh, I mean, it uh, has happened before, so I would actually be I curious to see the idea on that, but. Yeah, but I mean, this item's a little bit more sort of meta game <laughs> breaking or meta game changing than just say uh, the Lex Talionis. I mean, this is practically like you know smoke gank for for Hon pretty much, which is <laughs> a massive, massive deal, and obviously it changed the meta game for Doran. So you, you do think it's going to be something that will oh, be definitely. used once it becomes eligible? The, yeah, the only the only sort of issue I have with um, the Vowed Rot is obviously it's singular, so it doesn't really mm -hmm. work for the whole team, uh, and for for sort of like you have to buy it for like everyone, and so it's like five hundred gold if everyone wants to be involved. Um, and at the same time, it's a little bit expensive for supporters, which I think is the main sort of gist around it. But I think it can definitely work. I think for this sort of for 
you know, for the Vowed Rock, it's more for like sort of gankers kind of, but I think it would be a lot more game changing if it was more sort of targeted to supports because then you'd see a lot more dual supports. But in the end, we see a lot of dual supports anyway, so it's not the biggest of deals anyway, um, even if it's not for supports. But I definitely think it can um, sort of promote some interesting strategies to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see it as well. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I am too. I know. You know, the idea, again, the term smoke gank or the Dota ability that, that's in there, it's a lot of people have kind of, you know, talked about that eventually coming into Han, and, you know, that's that's the interpretation you can safely say of uh, what it, what it's going to be in Han. So it's going to be interesting again to see once that is eligible, and who knows when it is going to be, but I uh, wonder if that's used. But here we are in game three, and again, into the laning phase now after the pause comes about. So, yeah, I mean, the lanes, uh, the Torture Doctor Repulsor top lane. Not your not your everyday lane here, but uh, they do send them up there. And then the Swift Blade is going to be in the solo bottom lane in the end. So uh, you, do you think uh, uh, a chain, I mean, maybe said Torture Bottom, or you just find them having an aggressive duel lane over here? Um... I mean, if he goes bottom, I mean, he's a little bit too late already. Like, a minute's already passed, and it's going to take him a long time to get down there if he doesn't have a TP, which he does have a TP gold, but maybe he wants to sort of spend uh, this gold on upgrading the courier. And at the same time, it's not too bad. I think, actually, that in terms of the way lanes are sort of laid out, um, they're kind of even because, obviously, they're trading farm on the drunk instead of trading farm on the doctor repulsor. So, I mean, either way, it's kind of even, so that neither team's really winning, so in that sense I think they're quite happy just to sort of leave the lanes how they are for both teams actually. Yeah. Alright, so uh, again you see, what is he talking about? That skin. Oh, the fat Nymphora, yeah. <laughs> the sounds and everything and his anime, they, it is pretty hilarious. He's, he tries so hard and it's so difficult to fly around with wings apparently, so. Uh, but yeah, it, we, we do see, sure enough, Engineer makes a rotation down here, so uh, yeah, Nymphora, I mean, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying, if Engineer is down here, then there's no point Torture to stay top anyway, but if, if, like, if they're going to run a dual lane in the short lane, they might as well just run a, a tri lane in the short lane, because then obviously you, you'll have to make it, or force rotation come out from Hellborn, uh, and it would make the most sense, because you might as well just run a tri lane if you're running a dual lane, going against a dual lane, because then obviously you can shut down the, the Drunkard's farm as well as shut down the Nymphora's farm as well, so I'd like to see a, a rotation come out from Torture, and there's Quincy, so... Hey. That's a fun name to see. Looks like, yeah, he's on the Skype call as well, so there we go. Quincy joining the party here. Just in time for game number three to get things started, so welcome, Quincy. Uh, we do got Zealstun coming out. Uh, hits on both sides, but now we have the most follow-up. A little bit of stagger coming out, but just uh, a little bit of tap damage, you know, kind of feeling it out. Not the most happening in the end, but yeah, Torture insisting on staying up here, and it, it's working for Doctor at least, 15 and 4 in his farm. Wretched Ag only 3 and 1 currently is going to maybe get a little bit right here, at least some experience. Uh, but I will also say, you look at Kraken right now, he's actually off into the jungle. He's going to stack the yellow camp here and maybe farm that up a little bit because uh, that's a difficult middle lane to deal with and doesn't want to risk dying in the meantime. So um, bottom lane again, stun. No, no, again, no follow up. So just simply harassing. Not a big deal right there. But, yeah, Dr. Repulsor is off to a very good start. Again, goes back to the idea of this is that snowball kind of hero. You want to get started on him, and they're making a priority of it with the uh, aggressive dueling up here uh, in the end. So, But at the same time, I'm sure Pestilence is also doing pretty good. Yeah, 19 and 5. He's actually pretty much equivalent with Dr. Repulsor uh, with the farm. What do you think is more impactful? I mean, the Pestilence early farm or the Doctor? That's a good question, and I think it actually depends how they're going to play. If Doctor's sort of going to get this farm and sort of just sit back and do nothing, then obviously I think Pestilence is going to have a bit, a little bit more of a, an impactful time. Um, I think that with the Pestilence uh, portal key and the farm he's going to get, I think he's going to have more of an impact in terms of the team fights, because although Pestilence can definitely gank, uh, um, I think Doctor is sort of superior in that sort of sense, whereas um, actually Kraken might be getting sort of picked off here, actually. <laughs> He's being collapsed by two supports right here. We do see the SS League going to be going off. He gets the charge off. He's stunned shortly after, but Pestilence will cut him off right here. In comes the Impels on the wall off of the angle, and Kraken does go down. He was simply trying to go for the bottom rune, and obviously it does not pay off right there. So good job collapsing from the support to kind of do that rune control and ultimately set up the Bloodlust kill. Uh, in their favor, bottom lane, Drunken Master taking a little bit of damage right here. He's able to avoid most of the spin damage, though. And that'll easily allow him to actually get away uh, in the end. So, yeah, big start there for the Helper team once again. Uh, Pestilence getting the assist at least, so helping his farm that much more there in the meantime. And Kraken, on the other hand, again, not the strongest starts. Drunken Moss has got absolutely sick farm, seeing as he's 1v2. Oh, wow, yeah. I mean, he was sort of, I mean, he was, you know, 2v2, like, for the most part, but 
He's got 326 GPM at the moment. That's actually rather absurd, seeing a Super Blade's only 250. Um, so the early sort of help that he has received from Infora was enough. Actually, he jumped into that. Yeah, line. I mean, you see right there, they try to go for a kill, but he's just able to easy lunge, of course, being uh, the physical. And, and so play can't do anything about that, even with the spin up. So it gets pushed back, and Drunken Master going to be fine. So it's a mix of that as well. He, he has very good getaway against a Swift Blade, mainly because of that physical presence that he brings. So um, he's, uh, he's able to farm very effectively and more safer than others would perhaps be able to, and as you put it to it, it really has been a 2v2 lane, so it's not like 1v2 by any means, but still a uh, very, very good start indeed for the Hellborn team in that sense as well. So, yeah, we're focusing on Pestilence so much in his start, but yeah, really Drunken Master <laughs> is actually leading the way overall in, uh, in GPM now with the way things are going for the time being. Only six minutes in, so still very early, but definitely impactful. So, again, okay, Portal Key Watch still, still a ways off right here. We'll probably see upgraded boots at the very least coming out from Pestilence before... He's on that, but I mean, moving around. Oh, bottom lane, actually. They are going to jump on a Swift Blade right here once again. Now, this time they're going for a kill. The wall's not happening just yet. He's waiting for the right opportunity. There's the wall coming off. The stagger and a couple more auto attacks. Grace of the Nymph also increasing the uh, move speed of him, as well as giving him that mana regen and easy kill in the end. So, yeah, and Nymphora, I mean, Drunken Master's already so powerful, you know, by himself with the skill set, can spam his abilities and whatnot, but with an M4 just feeding him mana as well, it, it gets just absurd. <laughs> so I think that's another big thing to keep in mind mm -hmm. with the success. Um, and the only problem is actually is that, I mean, Hag's got in so much XP in this top lane, a lot more than he should have, honestly. Um, and he's no in really no danger of dying because now actually Engineer, uh, so Torture is actually rotated bottom. I mean, it's going to be a 1v1 against Doctor, but actually bottom lane. Yeah, they're going in again. This on spin, though, on a Drunken Master, taking plenty of damage, but again, he's just able to face, or Ghost Marches away right there. And uh, not not a kill going to be happening. Empath will put the stun on a torch in the meantime with the Essence Leak snap. The wall comes out as well, and now Drunken Master going to go back in. He lunges them back into his team. It's easy. Seal stun set up, and more auto attacks to follow for the kill. So, Rexar is really turning it on in this bottom lane. It really has turned into a tri lane now. And that uh, seems like it's working out much better for Rexars in the end right here, at least for the time being. Yeah, and that's because actually Drunken Master has such a, a better start than the Swift Blade anyway. And as well as the, the supports actually are doing a lot better compared to say the Torture and Engineer. I mean, Empath still has boots, whereas Engineer and Torture still don't. Uh, but now, I mean, now that the rotation from Torture, I mean, Hag's going to start getting farmed. Yeah, she probably won't win this lane, but I mean, she's gotten already so much more than she should have. Uh, and I mean, I'd really like to see Doc can start getting involved, particularly as it's so easy to get involved in the bottom lane because there's a, he's going against an aggressive tri lane. One TP down here, I mean, he's such a mobile hero, such a mobile hero, sorry, um, that he can easily sort of start setting ganks up here uh, on the drunk and on the new Ferrara. But one thing that is certain that he needs to start getting active if um, he's you know going to get his team back into the game. Yeah. Uh, you do see right there, Wretched Hag. Of course, uh, get the the better levels, uh, extra useful for the team and. Higher win percentage. So, yeah, off to a pretty good start there in that sense, too. Torture. Yeah, he almost gets caught out. He will get caught out. The wall comes off. He cannot go around in. He's forced to stand his ground and ultimately does get killed. Now, you see Kraken trying to get a little bit of revenge for the team, and the charge just misses. He will use release of Kraken. He catches oh. impact, actually. Beautiful release of Kraken. And Mike at the one kill. Might not, actually. The Essence Link is so strong. Wretched actually Sono screams. Doesn't hit Kraken. Doesn't matter. The auto attack finishes him off. Going to go for the kill on Engineer as well. Not enough uh, for the kill, though. She blinks in. The Sono scream will finish the job. And a double tap when it's all said and done for Big Arlong right there. But, yeah, it took a lot longer than expected. Kraken, I mean, he, he, he was also trying to guess Wretched Hack, I'm guessing, going up there. But... He at least got Empath, <laughs> yeah. and that worked out. Uh, but in the end, though, now, I mean, after those two kills, Hag is like, definitely back in this game. It's like she's been 1v1, and Doctor's just had a bit of a better time, uh, which is a, even terrible, more, even more terrible news now for coming out from Legion, because once Hag has a good start, she can definitely start snowballing, snow, snowballing of her own, just in terms of farm. Uh, and, and again, though, Bigger Bang is just sort of a little bit too busy farming, and maybe this could be the, because of the hero he's on. Um, I mean, normally he's already on the, sort of the hard carry, like the Swift Blade, actually he's been middle lane, yeah, they want this kill on a Kraken, but good timing right there with the chain reactions from Torture stops the job. But, yeah, I mean, Beaver Banger, you know, definitely the carry player for the team, the farmer, but he, this is a Dr. Repulsor, and I'm not saying he should be moving around getting kills and whatnot, but he has that capability, especially now being level 7 yeah, even. The only problem is is that, I think, 
I think if he was, say, like a, a really hard carry, then it wouldn't be bad if he was AFK farming. The only problem is, is his Doctor Repulsor, so even if he does get that kind of farm, yeah, it's good and all, and he can definitely carry. He's just not going to carry as hard, and at the same time, he has the potential to gank. And if you have the potential to gank while your team is losing, why don't you? Like, just try and get your yeah. team back in the game. That's bottom lane. Yeah, Engineer is going to be gone on. Drunken Master doing a lot of the work. Not enough for the kill, though. Untouchable is up. So he's going to be mitigating some damage. Now for the oh, TPN is just going to no. stand there. Oh, it stops it though with the initial stun. Gets the kill on him for Drunken Master. The spin damage will be enough. And a double tap for Resha. That is a huge turnaround. Oh, they tried to make the fancy getaway. And I don't even know if that was necessary, to be Probably honest. Not. But yeah. <laughs> Ends up killing them both. I think, if, I think Drunken would have maybe survived. Maybe it would have just been him. But in the end, went for the big play. Just couldn't get off in the end. But... Not the biggest of deals. I think the main deal here for Hellborn is that you know Pestance closing on his portal key. Richard Hag's having a good good time now as well, closing on that 300 GPM and at the same time Drunken, although he did die, still under 350 GPM. Mm -hmm. Compare it to sort of Legion, the only two big farmers here is the Doctor, who hasn't had actually any impact in the game right now. Nil, nil, and nil, um, and Swift played 300 GPM, two, one, and zero. Oh. Um, so for, for Hellborn, it's not, it's not looking too bad even yeah. after that. Yeah. I, I, the uh, that's definitely it makes it feel like it's so long. I mean, it's, it's a four second channel on that ultimate of Nymphora, but I'm sure that felt even like 10 seconds right there for them. It just is taking forever, but yeah, in the end, maybe even unnecessary, and both do end up dying. But as you're putting it, Junker Master still happens to be even now the top farmer in the game at 360 gold per minute. It's gonna be going for that right up uh, shrunken head here, so you know, not going the soul's bulwark choice instead of the shrunken head. Portal key is coming along for Parasite. Ooh, he just misses the Impale stun. I was trying to set something on Kraken. He had the support nearby, but could not get the stun off, and Kraken will just continue to farm in the meantime. So Dr. Repulsor has a little bit more wiggle room in the sense that at least this team just got a double tap, you know, slowing things down a little bit. He is doing his best to farm away up here at the top side, but, again, that also begs the question of, well, I don't know. I, I was going to say maybe adjusted to the bottom lane, but at the same time you have a Swift Blade who wants to still get plenty of farm. So... Uh, he's going to try to find elsewhere for the time being, at least. They do have double stack ancients here. Maybe you want to wait to triple stack it before anything oh, happens line. there. Yeah, they're setting up. The stun will hit. Dr. Pulsar flies in, so he's going to start being active now. He, he dodges the stun as well. And uh, easy kill coming out. Right, that was his own team stun. But anyways, they get the kill on the Pestilence. And Richard Act just a little bit too late. So, hey, just start grouping up and getting kills. And that strategy works, too, so... Yeah, and so unfortunate as well because he was just had enough gold to buy his portal key and just couldn't buy it in time before he died. But in the end, he's still only like a thousand, like a hundred gold away from it, and that's not going to be the biggest deal. But that's that's the sort of the power of Doctor Repulsor. Like, you saw him sort of initiate like halfway across the map almost, and that's what I'd like to see him do uh, more often as well because he has the potential to do it, and, and that's definitely the way to get back into this game here for the Luton side. Yeah, you see middle lane once again. No, no initiation. Uh, he's going to be fine. So. Yeah, Pestilence does have enough for that portal key now. He's probably going to buy it right here, just waiting where to go. Uh, wants to maybe find an opportunity. What's going on here? Engineer catches him four with the energy field. Kraken's trying to get close enough, has a torrent, but he's not going to risk charging in right there, knowing that support could be coming Bottom to lane. turn things around. Bottom lane chases on Dr. Pulse, who's going to be locked down. Nymph 4 is even TPing in. He has the ultimate. Oh, he dodges the impel as a result. Nymph 4 TPs in with Hag. They're using a lot of resources right here. If they don't get this kill, that's going to be risky. Batfoss in the face of torture. So at least they get something, but now the supporting cast is nearby. Dr. Pulsar, he's taking some good damage, throws around with the auto attack, but he will be finished off due to the portal key impale from Pestilence. But now Pestilence in trouble himself. The impale side doing plenty of damage, or excuse me, the spin doing plenty of damage, and uh, he will fall, doesn't have an impale side. Swift slashes all on him for right there. Gets the kill, but at what cost for Swift? But it's going to be his life, it looks like. Yep, just a little too risky of a dive right there in the end. So was trying to make the best turnaround for his team, but definitely hung around a little bit too long. What is Drunken doing? He wants that Ballista. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they were kind of coming in. Well, yeah, but I mean, him. in the end, a uh, great trade card from Hellborn, taking out two of the most important calls here, the Swift Blade and the Doctor Repulsor. Yeah, they did lose the Pestilence, but Hag and D Drunken still survived. And I mean, and Pestilence picks up his portal key anyway, so I mean, at, at the end of it, I mean, Pestilence still has his core, uh, whereas Drunken and Hag can still sort of work towards any more items. And uh, Drunken closing on that strong head, and once he gets that strong head, actually, he's going to be an absolute beast in this team fight. I mean, the most amount of damage coming out is obviously the the, the magical damage here, and um, because Swiftblade is so far away before you know being a real physical right click threat. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't know what Hag must have bought something as a role, right? Like, oh, uh, yeah. There we go. 
What did she buy? What's oh, okay? There we go. Yeah. So on the way to life brand. Yeah. But yeah, yeah Swift play again. It is kind of different than the first game in the sense, like like we talked about that game. He actually went the rune cleaver right away, uh, enhanced his farm. Do you think it's it, it, it's, it's kind of like, yeah? It's it's all what it makes sense this like, game here. Because I mean, he's already picked up the the ring man. Unless he starts, I mean, he's, he's going to get a rune cleaver like 25 minutes. I mean, with the farm he's going to get, it's me so far away. And, and by 25 minutes, the game could have already be sort of somewhat decided. And then he probably got at least another sort of 15 to 20 minutes to farm on top of that. Uh, and and just time isn't isn't the, the thing that Legion has at the moment. So yeah. I don't think a uh, rune cleaver would be the best item pick. I mean, he's looking towards that. He's going to pick up the abyssal skull most likely, uh, which is a fine item. The only problem is, is I just like not sort of quite a beaver banger, but I mean he's played a fantastic game one and two, but it just feels like he's not on the right hero for him. Like it's not like a massive farmer bottom lane though. Yeah, drunken master is gonna go down uh, at the bottom lane. Uh, you see engineer getting credit for the kill and. Obviously, any kill that they can get, especially at this point. I mean, overall, golden experience, it actually is a lot closer than I would have expected. I kind of just looked at it for the first time this game. And it's it's not too big of a lead, especially after that kill. Um, at 16 yeah. minutes in. Yeah, I mean, and Beaver Banger did just sort of do exactly what he needs to do down bottom lane. Like, he's at the moment, he's kind of like the, the mid initiator uh, slash sort of ganker at the moment because there's no portal key on Kraken over. He's very close to it. And he needs to sort of help his team out in terms of ganks. And, and that's what he's starting to slowly do now. But, I mean, 1-1-1... One, one, and one, I don't know, 60 minutes in, I think he should be doing a little bit better. And I yeah. just think that sort of mindset of, sort of AFK farming is in, in his sort of mentality. And mm -hmm. uh, for a port top lane, though. Yeah, they tried to catch, uh, that was Kraken right there. But he just got his portal key, I believe, from the side shop and uses it to portal key away and stay safe. So good timing right there coming out for his favor. But all four uh, heroes are going to group up up here for the top lane for Rexars. I say four because Draken Master is not with them. He's actually still going elsewhere to the middle lane. He has purchased a Warhammer, I believe, so now he just needs the pattern. And uh, that, that Shrunken Head is definitely going to be coming about for him. But this top tower push, I don't see the Legion team putting up a defense here. Probably probably too risky at this point. They just want to continue to farm for the time being. So, yeah, the uh, the top tower definitely going to fall. They are going to try to counter push the middle lane. In the meantime, Dr. Pulsar does buy a glowstone right there. So going to be on his way to an icon of the goddess right here. Here come the TPs. The portal key from Pestilence that will catch Torture. Swift Blade. You probably just want to say, you know what, I love you, buddy, but uh, I can't do much to save you. Torture might not need saving. Uh, what am I saying? Yeah, he gets collapsed on as all five heroes come in and do the job. They're still going to try to chase a little bit more. Kraken might have overstepped his boundaries. Actually. Oh, the charge of the tree. He panicked right there. He tried to charge away, but he hit the tree, and now he's in trouble. He gets the release of Kraken off. Dr. Pulse is going to fly in. Will this set up some turn kills at least? Engineer coming in. Swift put in as well. He has level two Swift Slashes. He's going to spin first. Oh, he Swift Slashes, but it didn't go off. That was really weird right there. He will spin on top of Wretched Hag, but Wretched Hag oh, blinks away. Yeah, he got fogged out. It happens all the time oh. to me sometimes. And it's so unlucky as well. Like you need to follow the vision, or you need to keep vision. Because um, and, and, otherwise, if you lose vision uh, just for one slash, it can be the difference between you um, keeping up with the ultimate and not. And so a little bit unlucky there coming out from Russia. I mean, I think they could definitely turn that team fight. I think Hellborn was over just a little bit too much there for the crack and kill. Well, um, they, they did get the Pestilence, but, you know, in the end... Not I wonder, anymore. well, was it that, or did he, did he actually use it on the untouchable Drunken Master oh, on accident? Be, well, yeah. That, be, so actually, no, I, I don't even think one hit went off. I just saw him standing there, and all of a sudden he started spinning. Okay. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it honestly yeah. could have been that, and that's obviously at the yeah. fault of him, definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If that's the case. So, But, yeah, no, I, I knew what you were talking about as well with the Fade to Black. It, it is an issue. you got to follow and have this, make sure you have the vision. But here we go. They're going to try for uh, defense right here. Wretched going to be locked down. But the counter from Pestilence coming out. Wretched will be able to blink away. Kraken's going to fall. Uh, they were not ready to fight there. They didn't have switch slashes. No release of Kraken. They, they're really trying to force these fights mm -hmm. when not being in the best spot to fight. Yeah, and particularly when Drunken Master just picks up his Shrunken Head, that's like the worst time they could have fight. And like you said, I mean, they're only giving up a tier one. Why are they so like horny just to try and defend their tier one? Yeah. Uh, when they didn't need to, and as a result, <laughs> they paid for it. They tried, but yeah, that did not work out as as planned and at all. So, uh, Doctor Repulsor again. He picked up the Glowstone. He can split up the uh, Ring of Sorcery. So he really just needs the Beast Heart now for an Icon of the Goddess, if that's what he chooses to go for. Which you know we can safely assume with that. Uh, Glowstone don't pick up at this point. Um, you think the icon would prove to be the best choice here? Yeah, I think so. And at the same time, he's already started going for it. Like for him to sort of switch up the iron build now would, would be sort of no, would make no sense. But at the same time, like, it's so weird. Like he's picked up the, the the icon, and obviously that promotes a lot of early aggression, a lot of early ganks. And it, it's just something I haven't really seen of him. Like he's just been farming the whole game. He's two one and one, and 
yeah, he hasn't had a bad game, but I think he could have definitely had a better game since he had like all the free farm in the world and there was a you know a lot of potential to gank and that just, he just hasn't. And like I said before, maybe it's because he's sort of too focused on sort of farming and less about ganking because he is the main carry player, yet he's just playing like a hero who needs to have that sort of early roam and early sort of gank potential. He just hasn't sort of shown it, but yeah. we'll have to see that. Maybe maybe when he picks up the icon, he's going to sort of start ganking a lot more. But at the moment, um, he's just been farming a lot of the game. And we gave him a lot of credit in game one and two, but I mean, if you're going to give someone credit, you also have to sort of give him a little bit of criticism when oh, yeah. when. when Oh, yeah, definitely deserve so. Uh, they deny the middle tower in the meantime. Tracker Master leading the way with that, so doing a good job of rotating over there and preventing the extra gold for the Legion side. So uh, you talk about Swift Play too. The Abyssal Skull, it's still not even finished, actually. Um, if he... <laughs> I'm, I, again, I assume that's still the plan, so... Um, is it going to... Oh, no, he actually... Okay, he did go Soulsbark. That's right, okay. Okay, um, that's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> Cause because like Souls Ball, okay, like it gives four armor to the team, but then you could pick up a Abyssal Skull and give it five armor, twelve plus twelve percent base damage, as well as the life steal. Like I don't know, man. That's so. Weird. Like you'd at least go the the Abyssal Skull, and then if you wanted more armor, then go Bulwark. But I mean, in general, Abyssal Skull is just overall better than uh, than the the Bulwark. Yeah, you see right there. Uh, uh, not too, not farming the best, only two hundred eighty-one gold per minute overall, and doesn't usually result in the best success for. A hero like Nymphora, so, or excuse me, hero like Swiftplay, speaking of Nymphora, he's nearby. And Regnag is going to jump in, but just kind of poking in, seeing if he gets a reaction, if anything. But nothing to be having. Pestilence, he really goes deep. But again, that doesn't really matter. He, too, just falls back uh, after the fact. He had a haste to assist with that. But, okay, Icon is finished on uh, Beaver Banger now, playing the Dr. Repulsor. So we'll see if he can perhaps start getting some charges added up on that, if they can maybe make a fight yeah. happen here. I mean, like, yeah, he, he has a chance for redemption now. He's picked up the icon of God, uh, icon of the goddess. I'd like to see him start start trying to pick off um, some people because he can definitely do it. But at the moment, they are sort of engaging in a team fight, most likely. No, I think yeah. Hellman are gonna back off in the end. There's no need to push it. They don't have the strongest pushing team, and and obviously they've got some good late game of themselves with the pestilence, Hag, and, and Red Drunken Master. I think mm -hmm. actually, I mean, both of these teams have great potential to go late game. Um, and I mean, if they're winning at the moment, there's no need to sort of rush anything. Uh, but, I mean, they've still got Congo to do, uh, and even more sort of towers like uh, the tier 2, tier 3 bottom as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely... I mean, the Sleeves side, they definitely have the capabilities of catching you and winning a team fight. I mean, we talked about that earlier. They, when they were going in, they didn't really have their ultimates. Now, big oh. cutoff on Engineer right here. Will he even energy field? Maybe go for a turnaround for the team. He gets locked down. He can't get it off. Kraken jumps in, though. Swift slashes are bouncing around. Going to be wearing off right there. He cannot get the spin off initially. The new first uh, empath. But Wretched Act jumps in with a bad blast of her own. Doing a little bit of damage at least. Kraken will get caught out. And now the chase continues. So not the engagement necessarily that the Legion team was looking for. Torture gets picked off. Swift Blade. Oh, he's going to be locked down. Will he be able to actually get back into the base right here? That minus armor doing so much work, but it's not enough to kill him. As we'll get back in. There's the pull in four. He gets the kill, but at one cost here, Dr. Repulsor goes down. He wanted that kill, but it did end up so putting him in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm watching him for a, a fat Nymphora gets killed, but yeah, that's not worth it. Definitely not worth it. I mean, this is most likely going to free up Congra if they choose to do it. Although I don't know if they can do it. I mean, Wretched Hag is really low, but maybe they're just going to go back to farming and then go for Congra. But, yeah, I mean, this lead is getting bigger and bigger. Um, and, I mean, there's not much Legion can do. I mean, that I said, you know, Doxy needs to start, start farming it or sorry, start, start ganking. But, actually, when he's picked up the, the icon, there hasn't really been a chance to. And they've been sort of team fighting left, right, and center, and that's the problem. I mean, uh, they were quite far behind uh, when Icon was picked up on Doctor, like mm -hmm. about 5,000 gold, and, and Hellborn just sort of took that advantage and kept on team fighting. And I mean, not to obviously criticize this sort of, you know, lose loss, or it's not even over yet, but I mean, this sort of deficit all on to Beavang on the Doctor Repulsor. But I mean, he had a free farm lane. He was only 320 GPM, 23 minutes in. You would expect something a little bit more, would you not? Yeah. No, I definitely agree there. So, Blue Dingo Balls, it's. You know, knowing, especially since they won the first game, and here they are in game three uh, after losing the second game, of course, you know, with on the verge of possibly uh, going to the goal, which, again, isn't the end of the world by any means, but knowing that you're so close to making diamond at least and guaranteeing a little bit more as far as price pool goes and uh, obviously the pride and everything else. So but it's got to be a little frustrating, but definitely, I mean, they got that kind of try-carry lineup in a sense with play Dr. Pulsar and even a Kraken thrown in there. 
Um, could definitely do work. And again, if they get the initiation, the, the biggest fault with the last fight was that Engineer he was not able to get the energy field off. The Kraken came in very late, and it was kind of an awkward place to initiate in the first place as the team kind of had to work around the trees and whatnot. So um, if they can actually have it come together, win one fight, they're still not out of the range just yet of – uh, of that, where if they wouldn't want to fight, they, they definitely are back in this game because so many positives would happen, including charges on the icon uh, being one of many. So at the top lane, they're going to push it in. This is the first tower up here still. Uh, you, you look at the tower situation, speaking of that, only one tower killed total by the Legion team, and I believe that was denied, actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So that's, uh, that's more just not the best news, but that's kind of one of those kind of good news at the same time because they have a lot of room to make up. In terms yeah. of getting gold with a tower kill, so kind of look at the good that way, but obviously that's not where you usually want to be. Grimoire Power is finished on Wretched Hag, and she's going to kind of push the middle lane in the meantime as the rest of her team counter pushes the bottom lane. So we're at that state right now. Rexar is pushing the secondary back. towers, yeah. Uh, because Hellbomb could easily just go high ground with this without a doubt. Like, they, they push a lot faster than Legion anyway, and they've already took down the tier 2. Actually, they're going to rotate and try and take the tier 2 mid as well. Um, but yeah, I think Legion do need to defend if they're going to go high ground, which, no, they've already put it back, which, I don't know, it's understandable, because I guess they don't want to give up their tier 2, but at the same time, I think they could have just pushed in and forced Legion back instead of sort of going back yourself. I mean, they're, they're in the lead, there's no need to sort of play Legion's game when you're the, the team ahead. Mm -hmm. So all the TP is starting to happen, and yeah, they'll just continue to play the, we're going to stay away from you game in the end, is what it comes down to. Double damage room, bottom rune, and you can see the Hellborn team kind of waiting either maybe for a bottle or just deciding when to pick it up. Uh, they might be looking to do Congor here. That actually would be another question. Maybe we get a counter ward first. If anything, uh, I don't know what they're going to be doing. They're, they're just going to sit on the double damage rune for now, though. Uh, they do have a ward of sight that is spotting this, though. So if they try to take it and maybe go for Congor, they definitely would be spotted. Wretched Dagger ran right past a rev ward as it despawned with the invis. So they know that she was heading down here, and she's actually just going to farm anyways. Uh, in what the meantime, are they doing? So. Oh, Ironstone. I wonder why they were waiting so much on okay, this Okay, yeah. <laughs> makes sense, oh, I guess. Oh, that's so powerful, man. You can Ionstone, get three charges, and then bottle it up. That's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Or technically, you could Ionstone, you could use it right here, you can go back Ionstone again. You could just keep refreshing the Ionstone yep. if you really wanted to. That's so. a little bit risky, obviously, because I mean, ha it's, uh, Legion could pick up as well, but yeah, it makes sense. You could definitely do that. I don't know why Hellborn are somewhat afraid to take a yeah. fight. Like They're really far ahead. I think it makes sense that they would be the ones looking for a team fight, but I guess they just don't, they don't want to rush anything. This obviously is uh, the placement for Diamond, so a lot on the line without a doubt. They don't want to make any mistakes. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's, I think we are kind of in that spot of uh, these, these teams definitely playing for quite a bit right here uh, at this point in time, so... You got the Ward of Sight going to be taken out, at least on the on the water. There is still a Ward of Sight at the bottom rune area. So, yeah, the Legion team definitely pretty aware that this is probably happening. But the question is, can they actually get here in time? Will they be comfortable enough to stop it? You see those double damage runes being passed around on top of the one that Wretched Hag had bottled. Not going to go all out, though. Still playing the very, very patient game, waiting for the next rune. It's going to be a refreshment rune down here. Top rune will be regen probably not worth going for uh, at the time being. So Congor probably going to fall now and yeah, Legion side at this point just simply going to give it up. So <laughs> looting your balls just not feeling risky enough uh, to go for a take right there. So now that means a token of life on who? On oh, Hag, okay. CP. Where Bottom are we lane. going? Bottom lane. Yep, they get new, uh, uh, Pestilus with their empath inside. Kraken is here with Dr. Repulsor. So this could, oh, <laughs> they saw him for a split second, but he portal keyed in TP. That was clutch on his part. So a little bit of wasted time, but not not the worst thing in the world, obviously, for uh, Rexers at the same time. So good getaway on the Legion's part. And again, just trying to simply do enough to recover and farm. I still th go back to the GPM chart, though, and yeah, it's just nothing. You're right. Beaver Bay, this just doesn't feel like his kind of hero. Uh, in the end, and we're kind of seeing that as it progresses on here in game three. So he has a blessed orb here with that said. I mean, that could turn into many things, of course, at this point. I mean, I think the sheep stick probably makes the most sense, but. No stun. No stun, yeah. I don't know. I think sheep stick would make more sense, but at the same time, I don't know if he's even going to be able to farm that kind of 
you know, money or gold before um, they push Rex, which is most likely going to be the most important team fight. So. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the problem with Icon, too. As strong of an item as it can be when you do Snowball, when you're not really using it, I mean, there's only two charges still on it. It's been like that for a long time now. It's like, was it really worth that 3,300 gold investment or whatever it is, 3,250 or 3,250, yeah. Uh, compared to what you could have possibly got, you could have gotten the at least a, a couple of Arcanas there making a Hellflower, you know, among several other things. So, yeah. So I think it's safe to say, you know, not not necessarily making the best use of it, but at the same time, you know, he is staying alive for the most part. He's four, two, and one right here, trying to get any farm that he can. But I think it's just a matter of time before Rexars is comfortable enough actually pushing in the uphill. And I think that time is near with Wretched Hag having that token now, three minutes remaining. Yeah, I mean, Pestance has it strong and head if he wants to buy it, which would be a massive deal. He's going to be, um, he's going to have a complete free farm or free roam actually in his team fights. Engineer is going to be absolutely nothing. The only thing that can really stop him obviously is the Kraken. But landing a perfect tsunami charger onto a release Kraken is isn't the easiest thing to do. So. Yeah. All right. So again, they're playing it very safe though. <laughs> Rexars is is not uh, not going to risk anything here and and sure again it's it's not the most entertaining to watch but at the same time it it's it'll very likely secure your victory um at the same time because it just again going back to the legion make up and the and what what's happening for them right now they just there's not a whole lot of excelling i mean sure they have late game potential themselves but they they aren't really getting a whole lot of fun with that said and that's just how it goes back to the map control obviously in 4 is a big part of that too uh, knowing that he could just be porting in with several others anytime, uh, anywhere on the map. So that's just another one of those things that, again, as a spectator, we may forget. But as the Legion team, you're, like, constantly looking out for that when it's going to happen. So a lot of just poking in right here, keeping the lanes pushed up. I mean, the token, how long much left is on it? 114, 140. So probably want to make use of that at least. Screw the Hellborn sound. I don't see a reason not to at this point. And now they can push you into the top lane. So, uphill attack. Several misses coming out. That's what happens, though. Going to do the, the damage necessary to attempt to try to get the, the job done. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, Beaver Banger, definitely that carry kind of player. Like I said, hell, even in game one, 700 gold from anybody finished with on Swift Blade. And now here he is at uh, 340 on Dr. Repulsor, so... Yeah, not not surprising stat line to see there. In the end, when he struggles, the team itself. Not usually the best success. Token down to 55 seconds and counting now, so a couple more creep waves here at the most. Before that's ultimately going to be wearing off. So this should be a tower kill at least. You see invulnerability doing what they can. They have decent creep uh, push, so... I'm going to take that out pretty effectively. There is buybacks across the wall. At least Doctor and Swiftblade would have buybacks. Not really anyone else for the time being. Yeah, and I think it's getting to the stage now, actually. I think if Hellborn wanted to jump in with, with Pestilence, I think that's the way to do it. Uh, jump in maybe on the Swiftblade and try and get uh, a Drunken Master sort of bursting down before he gets anything off. He's only 1,200 HP, actually, so we might see that in the near future. <laughs> There we go. Tower falls, and they're just going to fall back, it looks like. So, again, this is just a very, this is almost taking me back to the TDM complexity days. Just very, very safe play. A lot of avoiding fights, and all of a sudden it ends in one, one clash. Now, usually that, that leads towards uh, the team's kind of being even, honestly, in the sense of farm and everything, but... Uh, obviously, in this case, Rexars has a pretty comfortable lead, but again, we've, we've already gone over that. It probably has a lot to do with just, they you know, what's on the line. They're just going to play the safe game here. Yeah, but I mean, so Legion are rotating bottom, and if they can get this Pestilence, no, Pestilence is going to back off in the end. But, um, yeah, um, I think I think Legion can, I think they still have hope. I mean, it's there's, there's definitely looking very, very bad, but there is the Nullstone pickup on, on, on Dr. Repulse. They're not the biggest of items, so he's got a Nullstone. Now they can start winning games, but... Um, they need to get a pick off, folks. They can sort of somewhat get a few cures. Actually, cracking on hack. Yep, there we go. No follow up, really, though. She's gonna be able to blink it up. No, she can't. So slashes a hole, but she blinks at the last second. Oh, uh, that was huge because if she actually did get killed right there, that could have been the start of something, maybe for our Legion team. But Swiftly ports out. Wow, Kraken just melted. Holy crap, a level 3 swarm with the physical damage right there. He just melted. Yeah, top lane. 
They're going to try to get a jump right here. Swiftblade all of a sudden nearby. They wanted to go for him. He puts up the energy field, though. It kind of disoriented them a little bit. And actually, Dr. Pulsar will come in. So not going as planned here for the Hellborn team all of a sudden. Empath goes down. Dr. Chasing, but just can't get close enough to the uh, Nymph 4 to get him taken as well. So minimal casualties at least for the Hellborn side right there. But uh, they had chances. Yeah, Trunga didn't probably strung ahead before he went in onto Engineer. So uh, one little misplay there, but in the end, not the biggest of deals. Hellborn are probably going to just wait for the, the next token to be up, which is going to be up in the next couple of minutes, most likely. Um, and then they can sort of just slow push in again. I mean, there is so much on the line, though. I mean, yeah, they can obviously go Diamond next cycle, but at the same time, there's obviously the risk of them not getting diamond next cycle mm -hmm. uh, if they're in gold. And at the same time, you obviously want to be in, in diamond the first cycle. It's, it's obviously the, the first cycle of Hondo Season 3. Yeah. And you want to show everyone Get that, that momentum. you're obviously in mid business. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of reasons for that, definitely. So, um, again, Rexars, though, 16, near, well, nearly 17,000 goal lead and counting here, 11,000 experience lead. We definitely have seen comebacks from this point, but they, there's usually at least a couple of things that stand out to, to lead towards that. And well, one's Moon Queen having 500 plus GPM, <laughs> so <laughs> that's one of those. But uh, Pestilence middle lane, crack it again. Going to be a victim right here again. The Swarm debuff goes up, taking immense damage with just simply those auto attacks as a result. And yes, he will fall. It's not even a level three swarm actually. <laughs> it's only a level two swarm for the time being. Swift Blade, he's going to be able to port out in time. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't it must have right just there. been just a little bit sneaking in the top lane, but here comes the push though. Kraken doesn't have a buyback, so this is most likely the death push. Can Legion hold? There? There's a lot of mines here on the right next to Doctor Pops. This could play a factor, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, again, it's that that would be something. That was level one. Yeah, level one mines, not the most, but there we go. So Flash is bouncing around. Look at that though. Untouchables popped, and the mitigation was ridiculous right there. <laughs> and then Engineer says mitigate this. Or they say mitigate this to him anyways. They get the kill. So Melee Rack's going to fall. Rain Track's going to go down. And I think Blue Deacon Balls knows the inevitable may be coming right here of uh, a victory for Rexar. So, again, we're going to hold this off at least a little bit longer. But it's just not adding up right now. And the play and the, the, the lineup is just really too strong for the time being. Again, especially just how safe and how correct they're playing it really. It's the, the, they're doing what it takes to get the victory in the end. So... Uh, they're going to make their way to the bottom lane. They're actually going to try to make it uh, kind of awkward here as far as the push goes. Dr. Pulsar flies in, but no, they, they, again, they're just simply going to fall back because why force it? Congor should be up so, uh, shortly here. And so that, if anything, is probably what we're going to see them waiting for. Uh, Don, of course, uh, probably waiting nearby. The spin. Uh, with, with that said, I mean, we are at a time now where this uh, could lead into the grand finals pretty uh pretty nicely here as uh, it's already 250 uh, Eastern local usually we like to start that around three so may hell maybe be a little bit delayed uh, if this does continue going for a little bit longer but that's the good news so not it shouldn't be too much of a break in between the series at this rate as well and what will be Don versus the winner of this and right now of course that's looking like to be Rexars did mm -hmm. they play earlier or did, did they not play I'm trying to, I'm gonna, uh, Don versus Rexars uh, I don't know if they matched up in the winners. No, break. no, because Blue Dingle Balls beat them, and then obviously they That's played right. Dawn. This will be a whole new game, a whole new series, which could definitely bring a lot of upsets and um, things we probably haven't seen before either. Yeah, again, it's it's kind of funny to to think about that series because, no, well, I mean, not really. Cause I'm sure they're still going to be giving a good effort, and you know, ultimate pride is, is one thing. It's on Hawkass and stuff, but. Uh, they're ultimately playing for the chance to either play BMG or Sync Esports. It's just determining who's going to play which. Yeah. And, and but, I mean, for me personally, though, I would definitely, like, try my hardest. Because if you're on like, some kind of streak, which they are, I mean, they're unbeaten in this qualifier, you'd obviously want the, your hardest to try and, um, to try and you know, keep it up. And, and you want to come out as first the qualifier, showing that you're obviously you're the top team um, yeah. coming out from, into Diamond. Like, there's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, yeah, obviously you might try a little bit harder if there's something a little bit more on the line, but I mean, pride is enough in my, in my opinion to try and warrant your, your best game, and I'm pretty sure Dawn want to show that they are the, the best team coming into it. Oh yeah, definitely. So 39 minutes in, there's the Congor kill, and that's, uh, that's the second Congress, and no bananas just yet, but Token will be on Wretched Hack. She has another 3,400 gold saved up. So even uh, with this situation. 
Yeah, I wonder, do you think Legion actually know how far behind they are? Do they actually think they can <laughs> sort of like take this game? It's a little bit awkward, like... Yeah. Do you know, they are so far behind, like, I don't know why they don't... Obviously it's in their right to not concede, but it just makes yeah. it a little bit... Well, I mean, you know, again, if anything, they probably feel like, you know, we have, we have a solid late game team, you know, let, let's just keep them out long enough, get that farm, and eventually, and I think a lot of it maybe have to do with how game one went for them, how they were down a lot early on, and they yeah. didn't come back, so, but yeah, they don't have the stats that we have in terms of, like, the overall yeah. golden experience, so, I guess so. Um, usually you could get a good feel of it, of course, but it's, uh... And as you put it though at the end, I mean it's, it is in their right. This is it no matter what. So might as well give it a shot here. And hey, you, you somehow get a big initiation. That's what they're going to try for right here. Richard Dykes able to blink away. The energy field is down. Uh, the cluster has begun. Drunken Master jumps in the back gun. And again, he's just doing so much right click damage. Kraken's dead. Engineer's already fallen. Swift Slash is starting to bounce around. Make it the one kill. But unfortunately, it's on the target that had the token alive. She comes back up. Down goes Swift Blade. And now that should officially do it, because <laughs> if anything, if, no, if they don't even can see it, this is probably just going to finish the old-fashioned way. I can still win. I can <laughs> they got this now. I think Rex and has done GG. it. There you go. GG's being called. And we'll just wait for the Conceiva to go through. There you go. Yeah, you made a good point there, too. So they did play in the winner bracket semifinals, and obviously Blue Dingo Balls won that 